Hello gardening friends. A little while back I asked for your feedback about some things that you would like to see in the garden club, some content or some information you needed. And one of the things that was shared was information on how to use herbs. Herbs are easy to grow, they thrive. A lot of different herbs can thrive in our soil here in Ohio. And if not, we can put them in a pot with the proper kind of soil. So today I'm just gonna go through and make a little video of some ways to use your herbs once you're growing them. One of the most obvious ways is to take an herb such as this parsley here and we'll harvest the parts of the plant that are ready to go. It's a good idea to get to know your plants and to ask who's willing to give some foliage for harvest, who looks healthy enough. If a plant looks like it's struggling, don't harvest from it. Um, look here, we see flowering. That's cool. That usually doesn't happen in the first year. At any rate, never harvest more than a third of a plant at a time because it just puts too much stress on it. So if you know you're going to need a lot of herb for a particular project, say you're making a bunch of salsa or pico and you want a bunch of parsley chopped for that, or you're making a pasta dish and you want a bunch of parsley that's fresh, you come out and you ask who's willing. Take, if you can, from the leaves in the underneath side that are not actively photosynthesizing for the plant and use those first before you move on to nipping things off the top of the plant. And that's one way and that works, you know, if you're just gonna use something fresh, it works with all your herbs. With thyme, see this oregano here. The only way we can use this herb now is to watch how much all the little bees and wasps love it. That is quite a specimen right there. I'm gonna leave that dude be literally. I don't want to get stung. Now, this oregano has already flowered, so it is no longer um, very tasty for use in, in a culinary way. You could cut the plant all the way back and wait for it to flush back out again if you wanted another harvest, but I'm choosing to allow the pollinators to have their time with it and just let it go for the season and flower and set seed if it wants to. basil. One of my favorite ways to work with an herb, particularly this French tarragon in particular, it has kind of an anise flavor to it, which I don't really care for in food, but there's something about this plant that's just really, really magical. I like to come out first thing in the morning before I've eaten anything or had anything to drink, so just empty stomach, empty system, and I come to this plant and I ask it if I could have a bit and it shows me from where and I just take a little pinch of it and just chew it and kind of leave it in my mouth and take in the energy of the plant the medicine of the plant you get all of the aromatics that you don't get if you're using a dried herb or an herb that's not very fresh and you'll find that the plant can actually communicate with you and with your system when you interact with it in that way just taking a small piece of the fresh live herb you know and then gratefully enjoying the taste and the smell and all the aromatics and what it's doing for you it's a chance to really get to know the plant and to not just take so much of it you know for harvest that it stresses it I just kind of been nipping it back just to shape it in this way what other herbs are around that we could say hi to. Now hyssop is an example. The hyssop is getting ready to bloom. There are little buds on it. You can just see little purple flower buds. You can use hyssop in tea. Uh, when it is flowering, it is at the height of its medicinal capacity, so this would be the time to harvest some. I'm going to come out once it is in full flower and just take very few branches. These are first year perennials. I don't want to harvest a bunch of branches from them and stress them out. I'm going to just let them get established. I'll just take a few because what I like to do with them is dry them 
and use them for a smoke cleanse, for burning for medicinal purposes and for ceremony. This herb was traditionally used for the cleansing of the temple. They would burn hyssop in churches and temples and for the purpose of clarifying the space and just setting that intention of keeping the space pure. Making a tea from this herb has similar properties for the body. It's an antimicrobial, it's cleansing, and it has a very pleasant kind of sweet aroma and taste to it. So you could make a tea, or you could even use the fresh herb in food if you chose. Another way to use herbs is just to enjoy how pretty they are. I planted purple basil all around the garden because I love the color and I like how it contrasts with the green and how it's, it has green itself. And when it blooms, it's got these really, let's see if I can find some flowers, really pretty pink flowers. We see here that the pollinators really love and that contrasts nicely with this kind of dusty blue of the kale that they're growing next to. And another use of herbs in the garden is as a resource for pollinators. He's all still now. He's preserving himself. He thinks we're hunting him. This is dill. And I love to use dill fresh chopped in vegetable dishes and pasta. I love it with buckwheat. Here's some that hasn't flowered yet. And just the smell. I like to just touch the plant and release all the aromatics and really take the smell in and just give myself a minute to receive the energy of the plant that way by the scent. You don't have to eat it all the time, you can just smell it. And when it flowers, leave it for the little ones. As you can see my buckwheat's getting really tall, Ooh, waist high. This is my little colony of sage, culinary sage. And just because it's culinary doesn't mean you can't use it medicinally. We have this dogma about plants that, oh, you're supposed to use white sage if you're gonna do a smoke cleanse. And if you use culinary sage, that's just the wrong sage and you messed up and your house still has evil spirits in it because you use the wrong plant. And I mean, it's just kind of silly. Uh, these plants got a reputation for being used for certain ceremonies because they were indigenous to that area and that's how the people of that area use the plant. And it doesn't mean that people from outside of that area need to import that plant in in order to have the same effect. We have plants that are indigenous to Ohio or that like growing in Ohio that will have the same effect for you when used in ceremony and would appreciate being appreciated. This marjoram, yay. It would appreciate being used with reverence and appreciation and being considered special. So would this dandelion. <laughs> and just because a plant has a history of being used for ceremony doesn't mean you have to use that one. So I think it'd be a great idea to just discover what likes to grow in your area here in Ohio, the native medicine of Ohio, and see what plants come up for you and which ones would want to participate in your medicine. Speaking of medicine, these Chinese impatients have gone absolutely wild. I will have plenty of seeds if anybody wants some. Here I see the chamomile plants that I have cut back to keep them compact and healthy. I'll show you what to do with those flowers. You pinch the flowers off uh, dry them and then you can use them for tea or to make incense, which is one of my favorite ways to use herbs Over here we see Pink Sunday sage yet another variety of sage. That's just as good as ceremonial sage <laughs> Starting to bloom I'll probably use some of those for incense sticks And here we see an actual white sage doing really well. It was really hard to start these from seed. Most of the seedlings failed. And I think it's just because they don't want to grow here. They're not Ohio plants. We have 
um, Artemisia mugwort that is in the same family that has also been used medicinally and for ceremony by the indigenous people of this region. And I think I'm going to switch over to growing that and stop trying to grow things that don't really belong here as medicine just because somebody somewhere else uses them traditionally for medicine. So that's my goal. You're going to see some big uh, Artemisia in this corner instead of one poor little struggling sage. Thank you for being here though, buddy. And thank you for the lesson. This here is a chase tree that's trying. It's really not getting enough sun. We're getting a big um, dying tree removed from right behind here, which blocks a lot of sun. And this chase tree is going to do a lot better. The medicinal use of this true tree is the use of the berry. The berry has a balancing and harmonizing effect, particularly for women and our hormones. It has a lot of other health benefits, as most berries do. So a medicinal use of an herb may be to use its berry rather than its foliage. You can make tea, you can use the powder of the berries in smoothies, and you can just eat the berries themselves. This is lemon balm, which is a great plant to show you for one of my favorite uses for herbs, which is to make tea. You can make tea from fresh leaves like these, or you can dry them for later use and just have dry, loose tea. Putting them in a French press and just using them loose is the easiest way. But if you want to get really official, you can bag them up in little mesh bags or paper bags so that you can have your own little tea bags. And here is lavender, which is also about ready for another harvest. When it blooms like this, I come in and I'll just cut the blooms back after they've been out for a while and it encourages the plant to continue blooming for the season. And I take these and I just tie them into a little sprig and let them sit out and dry naturally just on a counter. And then when I'm ready, I use them. I, I like to burn them in incense, but you can use them any way you please. You could put the blossoms in tea. You could um, steep them in oil and make lavender oil. Oh, my fingers smell like lavender now, it's so nice. And I think that's all the herbs out here that I can show you. I'm gonna go inside now and we're gonna look at some of the herbs that I've already processed so that you can see ways that you could process your own herbs and to use them for culinary purposes or for medicinal purposes. I wanted to show you also a way to dry your larger herbs such as garlic bulbs, anything that's a bulb or root that you wanna get dry but not have to cut it up and slice it and put it in an oven or a dehydrator. You can hear we've got a fan going under here to keep air moving. This is a, a piece of furniture that is converted into a drying cabinet. These are window screens that are just extended out and used as shelves. And in here I'm curing my garlic. And I've also got chamomile blossoms just laid out on the screen. And I'm also drying some seed pods for my snow peas, for some of the winter peas. Just different things that can sit here and dry for longer periods of time and be okay. <laughs> I've got pea pods on top of my yarrow. Get off there. Yarrow is another herb that dries very favorably if you just tie it into a bunch like that. And you can hang it. I would not hang it in the sun because it just burns off the volatile elements too quickly and there's no need. It's so small and thin, it's not gonna get moldy. You just tie it in a bunch and hang it somewhere where it'll get air circulation or set it on a screen where it will get air to prevent mold and mildew. And then once these are dry, you can use them in any myriad of ways. Okay, and here we'll see some more herbs that are being processed or have been processed. Here I have a bundle of the beautiful purple um, nettle that was around all in spring and there was so much of it. it has beautiful medicinal properties so I dried a bunch of it um, just hung it up like this outside in the fresh air and let it dry into a bundle and you can store these for long periods of time they can be used for tea they can be used for incense they can be infused into oils or vinegars 
This is my jewel weed. Now jewel weed, most of its medicinal properties are water soluble. So you'll want to do an alcohol tincture or a vinegar tincture of the leaf when the plant is flowering and at its height. And you just go out and you ask for volunteers, you ask which plant would like to become medicine and you take that and that alone. And this has been sitting in the alcohol mixture. It's not um, straight alcohol, there's some water in here as well because the alcohol we have is extremely strong. It's for tincture making. And you just sit them in there till all of the beneficial elements come through. One moon cycle is what I like to do and full moon is upon us. So today's the day where I'm going to strain this out and um, put them in the tincture bottle so that I always have that soothing jewelweed well preserved because of the alcohol and I can store it for indefinitely. There's a kitty putting her two cents in. Thanks, Maya. <laughs> so alcohol tincture or vinegar tincture is a great way to use your herbs when you have a surplus of them that you can't use all at once fresh. And for things that you don't really wanna dry because their medicinal value or culinary value is kinda of lost when you dry them, it's better to preserve some things in alcohol. And here we see trays from my food dehydrator. And in these trays, mostly is um, the culinary garden sage that we saw earlier. And because it's so abundant, I've just been picking leaves as the plants um, ask and putting them on the trays. And they only take overnight to dehydrate. They're pretty thin. So I just put them in there. They're super crispy dry. And you can use each individual leaf to do a smoke cleanse. Um, you set an intention the same way you would use any incense. It has a slightly different aroma than the white sage. It's not as um, pungent. It's a little bit sweeter and um, softer. So it may be a little bit less offensive to people that don't care for the odor of white sage. So you can use it in that way. While it is fresh, you can tie it into bundles like this and make a stick for doing um, smoke cleanse or an incense bundle. And um, once they're dry, you can also store them in a jar, which is what I like to do for my culinary bits. And in the bottom of the jar, I put these rechargeable food safe silica packets that will absorb any moisture. And there's little color changing. I don't think you can really see it, but they're orange. And when the little orange pellets turn green, that's how you know the pellet, the uh, packet has been exposed to moisture and you need to recharge it. And once you recharge it, you can reuse it. You don't ever have to throw them away. So it's really cool. But I like to keep my culinaries in little mason jars or spice jars like this and keep them in the kitchen so they'll be close at hand because I love cooking with sage. Oh, and here, we just happen to see, <laughs> I'm gonna make some salsa today and I'm going to be using parsley and summer savory. And that's a great use for fresh herbs. What's in your garden at the time? And do they go well together and make a dish with them? One of my other favorite ways to use herbs, and I hope I can find one here. Huh. This is mako powder. And mako powder is a wood. It is Beaut I mean, the smell of this is just, as soon as you smell it, you'll instantly know that pretty much all incense is made out of that as a base ingredient because it has a very signature smell to it. You mix this maca powder with any powdered herbs from your garden. You just dry them and powder them really well, either in a mortar and pestle or in a spice grinder or coffee grinder. And then you mix them together with just a little bit of water. It makes a paste. And then you then take that paste and roll it out any way you can into long, skinny forms and make incense sticks like that. And you just dry them in the dehydrator. This guy over here. And once they're dry, they're just perfectly preserved herbs that came from your garden and that will burn just like an incense stick. And that is one of my favorite ways to use dried herbs. Well, that's all I can think of for now, tincturing, infusions, and teas, 
drying them to preserve them for long periods of time. Naturally, you could make essential oils from your herbs, but that takes an awful lot of equipment and a whole lot of plant material to make a very small amount of essential oil. So I like to really recommend to people that they just use herbs fresh, use them dry, use the whole plant. Don't get so caught up with essential oils and obsessed with concentrating and focusing and, and distilling down the medicinal components of a plant and thinking that's the only effective way to use them. If you work with fresh herbs and you work with dried herbs you've grown in your own garden, you will be surprised at how potent they are. You don't need to distill them and turn them into this concentrated oil that has so many potential ways to irritate us or to influence our pets in negative ways. Just use the fresher, the dried herb and start to get to know the plant and work with the plant. And I think you'll be surprised at what you find. Happy gardening. Thank you.